So something kind of wild happened this week. The U.S. government, without any press event, without even bothering to prep the media or coordinate with international allies, basically decided to tell the entire planet, you can't use Huawei's Ascend AI chips outside of China. Not, you shouldn't, not, we advise against it, not, be cautious. Just flat out, if you use them, you're violating U.S. law. Now I want to pause here, because we need to really understand what just happened. This wasn't the U.S. banning Huawei chips from its own markets. That's been the status quo for years. What's new and frankly insane is that they've decided that no one else is allowed to use them either. The U.S. government, through the Department of Commerce, effectively deputized itself as the world's technology regulator. It's a kind of economic imperialism, but updated for the AI age. They published this policy, saying that the use of Huawei's Ascend AI chips anywhere outside of China, even in a data center in Berlin, or an AI lab in Sydney, is now considered a violation of U.S. export controls. Not using U.S. chips. Using Chinese chips. But because those chips were made using some form of American origin technology, maybe a tool from Applied Materials, or design software from Synopsys or Cadence now the U.S., claims the right to dictate how they're used globally. That's not just extraterritorial regulation. That's technological hegemony. It's one thing for a country to say, we won't allow this product on our soil. That's sovereignty. It's another thing entirely to say, you can't use this product on your soil because it contains something we once had a hand in. That's control beyond borders. But here's where it gets stranger. Almost as soon as this new ban hit the wire, the government seemed to realize they had a problem. Legal problems. Diplomatic problems. PR problems. Because let's be real trying to police what kind of chips another country can put in their laptops or data centers is just not enforceable unless you're ready to start sanctioning your allies or arresting foreign nationals. So what did they do? They updated the website. Quietly. No announcement, no transparency, just revised the language. What had been an outright ban suddenly became guidance. They changed the wording to say that using Huawei's chips might expose users to risk. Not a violation anymore. Just something you should think twice about. So now it's not a law. It's a threat wrapped in friendly language. A pressure tactic. Let's think about what that means. If you're a tech company in India, or Brazil, or Sweden, and you were considering Huawei hardware for your AI workloads, the U.S. is saying, sure, it's not illegal, but if you do, there could be consequences. Maybe sanctions. Maybe a blocked license. Maybe a diplomatic phone call. It's ambiguous by design. They want you to feel uncomfortable. To self-censor. To pull back before they even need to act. And this is the real innovation here, not in technology, but in enforcement. It's regulatory ambiguity as a foreign policy tool. The idea is, if we can't directly control what you buy, we'll inject just enough uncertainty into your procurement process that you'll censor yourself. You'll choose the American option, NVIDIA, AMD. Not because you have to, but because it feels safer. Even if the Chinese alternative is cheaper, or better, or more available, and if that sounds familiar, it's because this is basically how soft power works. It's influence, not by force, but by making the alternatives too risky or too uncertain to be worth it. The same tactics that once applied to oil pipelines and telecom infrastructure are now being used on AI chips. Let's not forget what the chips in question actually are. Huawei's Ascend chips are the result of years of R&D in China. They're advanced. They're competitive. In some ways, they rival what you'd get from NVIDIA or AMD, especially when paired with Huawei's full stack of software, data centers, and edge devices. These aren't sketchy black box processors. These are serious silicon built by a company that, despite global headwinds, has managed to scale vertically from smartphones to AI to cloud platforms. Huawei's upcoming call matrix 384 AI cluster, which is rumored to be their answer to NVIDIA's DGX systems is expected to be built entirely on Ascend chips. If that system works as advertised, it could allow Chinese firms to train large AI models without relying on a single transistor from the West. That's what's at stake here. 
Not surveillance, not backdoors, not even cybersecurity. It's control over AI's future training platforms. And that's the real reason the U.S. is scrambling. It's not because Huawei is a threat to American citizens. It's because Huawei, and by extension, China is building an independent AI stack that doesn't need us anymore. And once that's in place, once countries see that they can train GPT scale models without buying American chips, licenses, or infrastructure, the leverage is gone. The era of U.S. tech dominance slips. Now, you might be wondering, okay, but how do they actually enforce any of this? Well, this is where it gets even messier. They use export control law, which is notoriously vague and incredibly broad. If a chip was made using American software, or on a machine that has a single component from the U.S., or even if it resembles American IP too closely, the U.S. can argue it has jurisdiction. And the enforcement can be brutal. Back in 2018, Meng Wanzhou, Huawei's CFO and daughter of its founder, was detained in Canada not because she committed a crime there, but because the U.S. accused her of misrepresenting Huawei's business dealings in Iran. Canada acted as the enforcement arm. It triggered a global diplomatic crisis. Two Canadian citizens were detained in China. In retaliation, the whole affair lasted almost three years and ended in a high-level diplomatic trade-off mang for the two Canadians. So yeah, this guidance isn't just advisory. It's the same legal framework that has already been used to arrest a high-ranking executive over a tech transaction. It's real. It's powerful. And it's global. And here's the kicker. The only reason I even have the original version of the policy, the one that used the word violation instead of guidance, is because my browser cached the page. I had it open. When I reloaded it later, it showed me the unedited version, while everyone else saw the revised one. If I hadn't done that, the U.S. government would have quietly rewritten history, and nobody would have noticed. They didn't even bust the cache, which is a basic technique any competent web team should have used to make sure old versions don't stick around. They just posted it, edited it, and hoped no one caught them. That's how unserious this was. And yet it was a major global policy change. So here's where we are. The U.S. tried to globally ban a Chinese chip. Then they walked it back. But they still want you to be afraid to use it. Because if you do, they might use that fear to force companies, or even governments, to fall back in line. It's not really about legality anymore. It's about influence, perception, and subtle coercion. And I think that's a bigger story than just Huawei. This is the blueprint for future tech control. Not by banning, but by making you feel like you might be in trouble. Not by issuing laws, but by issuing vibes. The world's most powerful nation is now trying to enforce international law through website copy updates. So the next time you hear the word guidance, remember, it's not about helping you make a better decision. It's about pushing you toward the decision they already made for you. Anyway, that's the full picture. If you made it this far, thank you. And if you're one of the few people still operating with logic, facts, and curiosity, please stay that way. We need more of that. A lot more. And to the folks who tipped me off in the comments, thank you seriously. This channel exists because of your attention to detail. If you're new, subscribe. I read the comments, I learned from them. If you'd like to support this kind of coverage, become a member. It costs less than a cup of coffee and definitely contains more caffeine. Stay alert, stay informed, and maybe double check your chip vendor just in case someone in Washington decides to rewrite the rules again.